Hey guys, I'm Randy. And I'm Daniel. We're two lifelong friends and musicians, but when we're not playing gigs, we like to talk games. And today on the Gaming Gig Podcast, we're talking about why is Xbox failing and what does it mean for the future of gaming? So Randy, before we jump into this topic, I would just like to address something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've noticed some of these comments that they've been coming in periodically for the past several months of this podcast. Just every so often I'll see one or two. And I saw some recently, I think on a short, and I would just like to go on record. I am not Justin Roiland. <laughs> I am not the creator of Rick and Morty, nor can I do a Rick and Morty impression. So quit asking. I have seen lots of comments about that. I love it. I'm glad it took us 107 episodes to address this because it is something that we do occasionally get. It is. And it's and I completely see the resemblance and it's pretty funny. Yes, it is. That is funny. Okay. So, that's just been weighing on me. It's been weighing on me too. I you know, I've been, we have I, actually we've never once talked about it. Never, we have never <laughs> talked about it. Before we rolled on this podcast, I just looked at Randy like right before we did the intro and I said, "Hey man, I have something I want to address. And he was like, okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't even tell him what. I'm, you know what? You exceeded my expectations with that. I'm I'm glad you finally addressed it. That is hilarious. Under promise and over deliver. That's Justin that's, Rollins. <clears throat> I mean, that's my motto. <laughs> so let's talk about Xbox. You know, let's. Xbox has been like the main thing that everyone's been talking about this week in the world of gaming. And it's because there are all these rumors mm -hmm. that – Mini Xbox games are potentially going multi-platform. Yes, the mini ones. They're not going to be on Xbox, well, on just Xbox right, anymore, right. but now they may be going to PlayStation, maybe going to Switch. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Um, you know, so we're going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about how Xbox seems to be a little bit in trouble in terms of like things aren't going so hot. Yeah. I wonder if it's like that dog meme. You know, with the fire all around him. Oh, at yeah. Xbox. Like, this is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we're also going to talk about Game Pass and is Game Pass hurting Xbox? And then finally, we're going to talk about what does this all mean for the future of gaming? Is Xbox just the first domino to fall in a long line of dominoes? Mm hmm. Domino, if okay. you will. So, about these games that are rumored to be going multi platform, it started with. Uh, Either Sea of Thieves or Hi-Fi Rush was like the very first games I heard about potentially going multi-plat. Yeah, Sea of Thieves was the first one I heard of. Yeah. And that, that's a big one for but, sure. But now the blight is spreading and the rumor has grown to not just be Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves, but Starfield, <laughs> Gears of what? War. What? And that's pretty crazy. And even Halo. Even Halo. The emblem of Xbox is not safe, I mean, rumored mm. that it even might go multi plat. If I can jump in Halo using the X button on a dual sense, that won't feel right. Yeah, it's, it is wild. Now, I don't know mm -mm. if these rumors are true. Uh, apparently, Xbox is going to put out some sort of statement or some sort of event, like they're doing a business event. So by the time this podcast goes live tomorrow, we may know more about that. I mean, because yeah. apparently it's going to be this upcoming week. So um, I don't know if all this is true. I do think that there's, you know, where there's smoke, there's probably fire. Most likely. And I do think at least some of these games are going multi-platform. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to figure out which ones, you know, we're going to decide in this podcast. Well, sure. Why not? Well, we asked the Gaming Gig Faithful, we said, which game would you most like to see Microsoft port to the PlayStation? And uh, at a whopping 15%, people said Starfield. 26% said Sea of Thieves. 18% said Halo Infinite. And 40% said, I ain't interested in none of this crap. The fact that the largest vote was people not even caring about Xbox games at all yeah. is wild to me. Um Still, it is cool to see Sea of Thieves getting the most in terms of the individual games. I think it's the hottest of those three. I mean, that's bad. I'm not saying Sea of Thieves is hot. It's not, but no, it's not. But hot. it has had long legs, and it has been around a long time, and it still receives updates, and it still has a really rabid and active community. So, mm -hmm. I don't know that Starfield can say that, and I don't know that Halo Infinite can really say that, or can ever say it did have that. Well, now, I mean, that being said, Halo Infinite is good now, and you should play it. Yeah, I think Halo Infinite has definitely been improved upon, but they just announced that they're not going to be supporting it anymore and they're moving on to the next thing. So, mm. ugh, that's not a good look. That's um, not. 
Here Star- you go, PlayStation. Have yeah. a dead game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and I don't know. I honestly don't. I think it's probably unlikely that we see Halo or even Gears of War or even Starfield. Mm-hmm. I think that those things, like, you know how rumors go. There's a grain of truth, and then it kind of gets blown out of proportion. Right. Um, Hi-Fi Rush, I think, is a, we know that is like a definite. They're, they've yeah. data mined the game. They've shown the little images that show that it is going multi-platform, or at least it is planned to go. Mm-hmm. So I think that one's a definite. I think Sea of Thieves makes a lot of sense as a multi-platform game, Me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I do too. I would love to see it go multi-platform. I think it would do really well. I yes. think it would do really well on Switch. I think it would do great on Switch. I think it would do well on PlayStation. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Sea of Thieves... I, I think Sea of Thieves would benefit from this. Not just, yeah, yes, not an Xbox, exactly. necessarily. No, but, yeah. But as a lover of Sea of Thieves, I hope this happens for Sea of Thieves. I do too. Because I just I would love more people to be into the game, and I would love it to just be uh, more accessible in general. And I agree. I think it would be great on Switch. They they would probably just make it so that you can't voice chat, which I think would be a little bit of a bummer. But I mean, that's the Nintendo thing, and and that's okay. Yeah. You can still you can still pirate chat. Yeah, there there are options. There are. So we have a comment here about this uh, from J.I. Pillow, who said, uh, if you send one, send them all. They are steadily killing their console, which might not be a bad thing considering how much they lose on each console. However, for it to really work, they will need to get Game Pass on every platform. So what do you think about this? If you're going to send one, just go Mm -hmm. ahead and give up on having console exclusives. Just send them all. Just full send. Yeah, just Just go ahead and... Not worry about it. Just you're silly if you don't think I'm going to send it kind of thing. I mean, um, I it just depends on how whole hog they want to go in on this, like, we're not in the console war thing anymore. You know, mm-hmm. like, if they really want to send it and they want to go all in on Game Pass, then I agree. They should send them all. They should put all their eggs in the Game Pass basket. They should get that as many places as humanly possible. And there you go. I don't necessarily want them to do that. Um, because we've, we've talked about, you know, on a previous podcast, kind of what we want from Xbox and that's not really what I'd like to see, mm-hmm. but I see where Japillo is coming from. It, it is worth noting that this is not a new thing. Like mm-hmm. these are not the first games that, you know, were Xbox console exclusives that are no longer Xbox console exclusives. For sure. We've seen that with the Ori games. We've seen that with, um, Let's think. I mean, heck, Minecraft is wasn't a, an Xbox exclusive originally, but they own it, so they, yeah. it could be if they wanted it to be. Right. Um, we saw that with what else um, <clears throat> recently? There was another one that I'm is like. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm blanking on that, but it, it's it, the precedent has been set. Oh yeah, it is definitely there. Mm-hmm. So uh, oh, Cuphead. I was thinking of Cuphead. Oh, oh man. So that ruined about a week of my life. Yeah. Oh God, dude! I tried Cuphead. Way that way too hard for me. That, not not my kind of game at all. That game, not your not your Cuphead of tea. No, not my Cuphead of tea for sure. Word. Great game though. All right, we have another comment here from I Nuclear Pickle. Hit us with that one, Daniel. I Nuclear Pickle said, "To be frank, none have really caught my attention as I look at gameplay. I want to see something different, or just to be like, wow, this looks compelling. Hearing this kind of stuff tells me Xbox doesn't have faith in their brand, even after buying so many studios." I, I think that Xbox, I don't know if they don't have faith in their brand. Well, you know what? I think that is, I think there's a grain of truth there. I think, I think there that is too. they're, um, they know they're behind. Mm-hmm. They know they're not doing super well. And so I think their confidence is just down. I think they're chunking some Hail Marys here Definitely. You know, to try to, try to mm-hmm. ride the ship. Mm-hmm. You know? They're like doing something, something needs to change. And they realize yeah. like, Hey, what we're doing isn't working. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have PlayStation outselling the Xbox console, like three to one, like it's not even close. Right. Um, you know, game pass signups had a big boost when Starfield came <laughs> out, but since then they've like flattened or even declined. Yeah. Um, they lost us. I mean, yeah. I mean, game pass, <laughs> they just, gained and lost us. Yeah. They, they tried. They're like, okay, we're going to take, uh, Xbox Live Gold or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. they were like, we're going to convert those over to Game Pass subscriptions so that Game Pass gets another big boost. But it, it, whatever they're doing, they keep trying all this stuff. It's not working. Do you think the Game Pass thing has like reached its <clears throat> has like reached its high water mark? No, and I, it's like people just have it that want it. I don't think so. Well, maybe if we consider that it's confined to Xbox and PC. Um, mm-hmm. 
I think that on Xbox, probably, you're probably yeah. right. Like, I think that it probably has reached market saturation in terms of people who own Xboxes. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, Xbox is trying to push Game Pass for PC right now because on um, one, of, one of the websites that, like, uh, content creators can use to, you know, get, like, basically work with developers and publishers so that you can, right. you know, promote their games – uh, Xbox is pushing Game Pass PC right now hard. So one of the things they're doing is they are working with content creators, just giving them access to Game Pass for PC and saying, hey, promote this service. Mm -hmm. So I know that that's something they're trying to push. And I don't think that has reached that market saturation. No, I don't think it has. Because I, I think people are just now starting to come around this idea that the PC is basically your Xbox. Yeah. I, I think it's just, and I've seen, like we did an episode about it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen other people talking about it and, and it's happened more recently, mm -hmm. you know? So I think people are just now starting to have this realization like, oh my God, I don't even need this anymore. I have this PC and then maybe, maybe they will get the game pass for PC. You know, and I you, don't know. And you don't even need a good PC because, right. you, you know, like, yeah, outstream. you want to play them natively for sure. But if you want to play game pass games, so many of them are available on cloud and mm -hmm. they have a good cloud mm -hmm. service. They do. Um, but for some reason, even that isn't working. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I think that the Xbox PC thing, like the Xbox said, like all our first party games are going to have PC parity day one. They're going to be on PC and Xbox day one. Mm -hmm. I think that is awesome for the consumer. Me too. I think it is truly terrible when it comes to <laughs> trying to sell a console. Oh, for sure. But they're playing right into my hand here on this whole, like, I don't ever want to buy an Xbox and just keep a PC thing. Right. They're playing right into my hand. But I don't think it's good. I honestly don't know that it's good for them if they want to be competitive in the console market. Um, like, we have this comment here from Ido Shannon, Shannon Nintendo, mm -hmm. who said, I think if Microsoft actually wants to sell consoles, they should make their exclusives actually exclusive to the Xbox consoles. Like, not yeah. even PC, but just, like, only the Xbox. I think that... If, yeah, if they want to sell consoles, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. But they are owned by Microsoft, and Microsoft is a computer-based mm -hmm. software company. You know, yep. so um, I just think that that's a little weird for Microsoft to, to like ignore weird. the PC. Super weird. Uh, but I agree that if they want to sell consoles, like that would be it. Because back on the think about the last generation we had that wasn't that way was the Xbox 360, mm -hmm. and that did obviously was really you know, successful oh, for them. Obviously. And, you know, the PC market is a great market for gamers. I mean, lots of people are there for sure. Um, but, you know, and we see even Sony and PlayStation, they're embracing the PC market, but they're not doing it day one. No. They trickle, you know, they're going to, Sony's going to trickle those things in for you, mm -hmm. but they're not going to hit you day one. No, especially with, you know, like maybe older games, like say we had The Last of Us Part 1. Um, that one came to PC fairly quick. Yeah, it did. But that's an older game. But they also made it so that you couldn't play it on PC at first. <laughs> right. You know, it was so, there, but you couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, that's where you got all those memes of f soft, fuzzy drool, you know. Right. <laughs> but that's a whole other episode. Um, but, you know, you got to think about this. Like, talking about their console exclusives, you know, like, at many Activision games, mm -hmm. they legally cannot be exclusive to the console. Right. Because Xbox said they wouldn't do it. Right. Why did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was dumb. But I think it was because they were trying to get the deal to go through. Yeah. But maybe would they look at that and they say, okay, you know, Call of Duty isn't going to be able to be console exclusive anyway. It's even going to have to go to whatever Nintendo has. They say, well. For 10 years. If we can't do that, maybe, maybe we should just give up on console exclusives. <laughs> what if Nintendo postpones the switch to like indefinitely long enough for the next call of duty to come out that has to whatever that is that it has to be on nintendo just to like bottleneck call of duty and make it have to be playable on the switch oh yeah nintendo's definitely that petty for it's sure like a, no it's not petty it's like a it's like a freaking maneuver man they're like hey if they do that i do think that it would help switch sales <laughs> yeah that would be fu so funny though the new call of duty comes out and looks like Looks yeah. like Banjo Kazooie, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, oh. But I mean, like, I, if I was Xbox, you know, like, obviously things aren't going super well for them. Mm -hmm. I, I think, like, they're willing. It looks, seems like they're willing to try anything. It, it seems that way. It seems like they are chunking crap at the wall and seeing what sticks. Mm -hmm. 
they've tried, they're trying Game Pass. They're, you know, thinking like, well, what if we just put our games on other consoles that are successful? Maybe they'll sell then. Mm -hmm. Um, The one thing they're not trying is they're not trying to put out really great uh, exclusives. They're not trying to put out compelling games. Like that's at least that's the way it seems. Man, we beat that that do- dead horse to, to death so many times that I I wasn't even gonna bring it up. But yeah, I know. I mean, I don't know that we've considered that that maybe just make some games. No, I mean like that was a, lots of comments that on these polls were saying they were saying like of course it, they just need games. It's not you know that's, that's the all problem. It is. Obviously, the console's good. No, and console's I, stout. It's good. It's a great console. It is. And, uh, you know, a few weeks back, we did a whole entire podcast on should Xbox just give up on making consoles. Mm -hmm. But one thing we didn't have in that podcast is we didn't have a poll asking people what they thought. Should Xbox give up on making consoles? Right. So um, a few days ago, I put out a poll asking that exact question. Mm -hmm. Should Xbox stop making consoles and focus on Game Pass? That's right. And at 30%, people said, uh, yes, absolutely. They should get out of the console race. It's over. But at 70%, people said, no, I believe in you, Xbox. I remember your glory days. Stay with us. And that's more or less what we came up with at the end. We also agree, mm-hmm. like, no, I don't think they should get out of making consoles. Because competition is good for us. Yes. That's and, kind of what where mm-hmm. we were coming from. Yeah, let's comment from Celeria Rose, who says, no, we need the competition in the console industry. Nintendo isn't really that, as they're more off doing their own thing. So without Microsoft in the console market, Sony isn't going to have any major competition to put, help push them. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that we already see Sony getting comfortable. They're already, you know, like, seemingly doing things that aren't so pro-consumer and you have microsoft <laughs> over here doing all kinds of super pro-consumer moves and uh, gosh, yeah i don't know and they're losing and they're losing with so it. yeah about the whole sony you know anti-consumer stuff so you, you know we just started our recent esports season at the school that i coach at mm-hmm. we had to buy a ps5 because we have a kid who's going to be playing madden for us now mm-hmm. so we bought a ps5 and we got the ps5 slim right the new one the new one and I, it just brought back all these feelings of how anti-consumer that whole maneuver was, specifically with the stand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I told our other coach who did the order, I was like, you know, we don't really know how we want to have this position in the lab. We might want it to be vertical, in which case we got to spend about 30 more dollars. And he was like, why? And I had to explain it to him. And he was like, that's bull crap. You know, that's, that's only partially true. Cause you can just totally, if it has, if it's the disc drive version, you can just set it up. You can. It does not need a stand. You can, but it's, I have, we have kids in there, man. And it's um, not as stable as it could be. And it scares me. So no. right now that puppy is horizontal. Yeah. But anyway, it, it, you know, and that's Sony, just one thing. It's just one thing. Yeah. But they, they're, they're developing a little bit of a, a track record. Yeah. Um, and that's just the thing. And it's like, but apparently it's working for them. Mm-hmm. We see that despite Sony being a little anti-consumer with some of the things they do, yeah, it doesn't seem to hurt them. Yeah. That being said, we still bought the PS5. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, like, who do I have to blame but us? And, you know, I can understand, like, if Xbox probably feels like they are not competition. Mm-hmm. So, because Sony's just really killing it with console sales. And Nintendo is killing it with console sales. Heck yeah. And Xbox isn't. But still, you know, like the people who have bought Xboxes, if whatever, whether Xbox decides that they don't want to make consoles anymore, which I don't think it's possible. I don't think that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But if they decide they're going to make their games all multi-platform, people who have been invested in the Xbox ecosystem are feeling betrayed by this. 100%. How could you not? Right. I mean, like. It's it, clearly Xbox. Xbox trying to save their own skin here, you know, mm-hmm. but they're not following through on the. The promise of, like you said, this ecosystem or, or however you want to look at it. like, Not that they necessarily said we're going to have one, but no, and when I you buy into a console, mm-hmm. you're buying into the console. And I think with the as soon as they said, you know, we're going to have PC games and Xbox games and they're going to be on both at the same time. I think at that point they said, hey, there is no closed ecosystem, for which sure. is great for the consumer, which but it just doesn't drive console sales. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have a comment here from like uh, Keenan who said, I've got hundreds of games on Xbox, years of achievements, and all my friends. I'd be very unhappy if they stopped making consoles. Fair enough. I mean, I still see kids all the time who will be saying to their friends as they're leaving, I'll see you on Xbox later. I hear that more than PlayStation still among the kids. 
I, I don't see um, how. I mean, like the numbers don't line up. Maybe it's a demographic thing, but I mean, yeah, you're probably right. Maybe the PlayStation kids are just more subtle. But I, I hear kids talk about you know jumping on Xbox all the time, and I have kids come to me and ask me about esports all the time, bummed that they can't play Madden or whatever it is for us on their Xbox because it has to be on a PlayStation for us. Mm. So anyway, well, social the, aspect. Yeah, the ne- next thing I want to talk about is Game Pass. I mean. Like Game Pass, we love Game Pass. I I mean, I love some things about it. I love how it is affordable. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking to game on a budget, Game Pass is awesome. But it at least seems to me that Game Pass isn't necessarily a key to success. Yeah. I mean, we love it when we need it. Mm-hmm. But we're, we don't just leave a subscription open. My cats are going wild. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Um, no, you know, we don't. A lot of people probably do. A lot of people just have that renewing subscription all the time and mm-hmm. and they don't think about it and that's good for Xbox. But, you know, are these subscription services hurting gaming? I don't know. Well, I think that it does kind of cheapen the experience of games. I think that when you when you buy a game at full price, you know, like you are psychologically going to want to get the most out of that game. Sure. And it may be purely psychological, but still you're going to feel like you, that game is better because you, mm-hmm. it's like the, the sunk cost fallacy or whatever it's called. Absolutely. At, instead of, if you paid a subscription fee, even if you paid full price for that subscription fee and you paid $15 a month or whatever, you know, say you have game pass ultimate, that's still way less. And the fact that you have all these other games Oh, and the, it, the paralysis, you know, the the, the decision fatigue mm-hmm. is so real with Game Pass. Super real. All right. We have a comment here, a big comment from Larry House. Daniel, I'm going to let you do the honors of reading this. <clears throat> I think it's a very interesting comment, but it is quite lengthy. Okay. Y'all bear with me. You know, y'all get behind me on this one. Shwa shwi. Larry House said, I predicted Game Pass and subscription-based gaming would hurt gaming. And it will continue to. I honestly played Starfield, Forza Motorsport, and Microsoft Flight Simulator for $1 due to a one-month promotion. What developer or publisher wants to work under that risk? They need to go back to focusing on exclusives and selling real games that go into the buyer's hand. If it wasn't for that, Xbox would have been dead in the early 2000s. Even some publishers need to be careful with their actions, such as Ubisoft. We are currently living through a downfall and collapse of streaming service movies and TV shows. The gaming industry will collapse if it continues to follow. This is actually a very scary time to be a gamer, and they definitely can't argue a physical console isn't needed anymore. Nintendo is currently on a path to have the best-selling console of all time while overselling old and cheap hardware. This tells me gamers want games, not the world's most powerful brick to run Fortnite. I just crushed that. You did. But not as much as Larry, because that was a hell of a comment, Larry. (laughs) Yeah, I think some of the things that really stand out to me about that is saying like, hey, I played Starfield, I played Forza, I played Microsoft Flight Simulator for $1. Yeah. Because of them running a promotion. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's right. Like who, if I was a Microsoft developer and I knew that my game was going to be day one in Game Pass. Yeah. And there was potential that tons of people were going to play this for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. What does that do to you as a developer? I think it definitely puts pressure on you because you know, you don't have the advantage of somebody just dropping $70 and really wanting to dive into this game. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to be hooked pretty quick or they're going to move on and download the next game. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a little bit of an unfair situation to put somebody in. Absolutely. I mean, like you don't when and I know for sure when I play a game on Game Pass, I don't feel like I really need to put the time into it if I don't initially love it. How could you? You only paid depending on how many games you sampled that month, mm-hmm. it could be extremely cheap per game, you know? Yeah. And it gets even worse than the paying one dollar. Because the truth of the matter is, the last number of times that I have subscribed to Game Pass, I subscribed to Game Pass. I played whatever game I wanted to play. I unsubscribed before the month was over and they just refunded all my money. Mm -hmm. So I played that game for free. I didn't pay a dollar for it. What? That's infinitely a better value. Infinitely better. And that is just using the system that they have set up. It's not like I'm, you know, like cheating or something. I'm just like, as long as you unsubscribe within a month, they just give you all your money back. Right. They give you the option to say, oh, do you want to finish out the month and then you won't be charged again? Or do you just want to be refunded? If you press refund, you played for free. 
It's ridiculous. That sounds so nice, but yeah, it is. It is a ridiculous business model. It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, they need to prorate that. They just need to because the way they do it now just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. um, and if I was a developer, knowing that there is potential that not only could people play my game for next to nothing, but they could literally play it for nothing, mm -hmm. why would I want to make an amazing game? Um, because maybe it won't just go to Game Pass, and maybe somebody out there will have to buy it. <laughs> Like maybe if it goes to PlayStation or right. maybe if it goes to or Nintendo. Switch. Yeah. OMG. Mm -hmm. I think we just figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Larry also mentioned earlier, he, it's like we've seen in TV, we've seen it in music. Yes. The subscription service has taken over. And I don't think it's good for either of those industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting part of the comment, too. I'm glad you didn't let us forget that. We were talking about music streaming yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, and how everybody's on it except Garth Brooks. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if Garth Brooks is like the Nintendo of music. I don't know what to, how to what to make of that, but I agree that those streaming services taken off have certainly made it harder on those artists to get paid off that. You know, they've all said it. And when you listen to a Garth Brooks song, it feels different. It just hits different, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> we were at a gig yesterday. Okay. And on the set break music, it was playing a beautiful mix of like 90s and early 2000s country. And I'm not going to lie, I was having a great time. But then all of a sudden, off in the distance, we heard the thunder roll. Mm -hmm. And Garth came in with that, that sultry tone we know and love. And I was moved. I didn't even care that I had to listen to an ad beforehand. <laughs> but if Garth had been on a subscription service like Spotify and you had listened to his music over and over and over, it just wouldn't hit the same way. It just doesn't. No, it wouldn't. And Garth hits, boy. Boy, he does. You know, I think about like music. I think about my records that I own. Mm -hmm. Those are my, the. If once I buy a record and I listen to it over and over, it becomes like my favorite record. You know, like I love those things that I buy physically, even if initially I don't, you know, know much about them. Yeah. But through subscription services, I don't even really honestly care to listen to music as much because of that. I don't know why, but it just like, it just doesn't feel the same. Um, it doesn't feel the same. I, mm -hmm. I agree. Now, I, I have gotten very comfortable with it and I do really like it. Yeah. But you're right. It doesn't feel the same. And, you know, and I do have a tendency to gravitate back to some of the same stuff over and over because it is sometimes just so fatiguing to, mm -hmm. to branch out into the infinite space of possibility mm -hmm. that something like Spotify gives me, you know, mm -hmm. and, and all these services do have like discover mechanics and like AI built in that recommends things that things you'll like. And it's pretty damn good. Mm hmm. So I don't know, maybe if that comes to gaming and maybe that helps with some of this decision fatigue, but it is real. Oh, it's super real. And like you said, you end up listening to the same sort of songs and you just leave the rest untouched. And that's bad for music, but I think it's even worse for gaming. Mm -hmm. Like we have a comment that actually addresses exactly that. Um, I don't know how to pronounce Neji, this. Neji, man. This is Neji Hyuga from Naruto. And I'm sorry that you died. Who says? The subscription models for gaming just aren't sustainable. Games are not a three-minute song or an hour-and-a-half film. Games are an interactive experiences that span from 25 to 100-plus hours. You won't be able to fully engage in no more than two, maybe three games at a time, leaving hundreds of games on the service not played or only played for about an hour at the most. I hear you. And it's like, yeah, if, if it doesn't really even work that well for music and TV shows, mm -hmm. why would gaming be any different when they're even more interactive and require even more of your time? Well, I don't think they would be. I think it would be worse. I think we definitely see that. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, even from experience, when you were subscribed to Game Pass all the time, you just played Sea of Thieves on it and you left the other hundreds of games just untouched. I did. And I did it for a very long time. And that's why I canceled it. Mm -hmm. I mean, no telling how much I've paid to play Sea of Thieves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so obviously gaming subscriptions are... You know, I think that people do like some aspects of them. I like some aspects of them. I love how cheap it is. Yeah. But that doesn't, Very mean, it's, convenient. That doesn't mean it's good for gaming overall. No. Um, but the question is, is will subscriptions become the standard? Yeah. So we asked, uh, we asked a poll, you know, will they become the standard? Will they become the primary way that people access their games? And it was pretty split. At 54% people said, yep. And at 46% people said, nope. So yes is edging out no's just by a little bit. Um, I think that I do think it's inevitable. Yeah. Personally, I think it will happen. I 
Um, you threw this poll in our Discord, which mm-hmm. you should join, by the way, with the link in the description of this video. And um, I voted on it. Mm-hmm. And I, I voted very quickly. I saw the notification, I clicked on it, and I voted with my knee-jerk reaction, not necessarily to what I think, but what I hoped. And I voted no, only because I'm trying to attract or factor this into the world. Mm-hmm. But it has happened in everything else. I know. It, it probably will. I know. That's just crazy. Um, hit us with this comment from Headhunter, Daniel. Herbie Hancock and the Headhunter said, if they do... Companies shouldn't be surprised if people don't want to sink hundreds of thousands of hours into games anymore. If it can be erased any day, the industry will eat itself from the inside out. Oh, yeah. We went Ridley Scott on it. But, you know, that's something we haven't even really talked about much is like, one, um, if it's us on a subscription and you know that one day it could just be removed, what, you know, do you feel like you want to spend hundreds of or thousands of hours in a game knowing that one day it could just be taken away from you? Well, that goes back to what we've been talking about for years of this podcast now about the all digital future mm-hmm. and how one of these days that crap's going to just be unplugged somewhere and you're not going to be able to play it anymore. You know, we've seen it happen with several Nintendo consoles recently. You know, it's happened in 3DS. It's happened with the Wii U. It's just it's going to happen. It's, Eventually, it's, it has to happen. Yeah, it does. There's, so, you know, and it makes me want to have physical versions of games. Yeah, especially games that like say like Sea of Thieves as mm-hmm. an example. This is a game you've put probably close to a thousand hours in. Yes. Do you have a physical version of that game? No. Do you want a physical version of that game? I wouldn't turn one down. I wouldn't kick, <laughs> wouldn't kick one out. You know. Yeah. I, I'm so glad that I do have a physical version of that game just in case one day. I mean, but the thing is, but if the servers go down, you can't play it anyway. I was about to anyway. say, but what oh, use gosh. is it? How's, yeah, it's like because it's a live service. Yeah, what what use is it? Yeah. There isn't, I mean, is it, are they going to let Safer Seas just stay on? You know? They could. They could. That just make me sad to but, jump on and be like, no one else is there. I'm doing a flaw. Keep a watch on the horizon. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a brick. No, it's a skelly galley. You know, like yep. that would make me really sad. So I don't know that a physical version has any use to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sea of Thieves is obviously very, uh, very special to me. Mm-hmm. But I, I just don't know. I don't know about a physical version. And I wanted before we move off this, I wanted to ask you. So Switch, you know, cartridges. Mm-hmm. We all love them. Love cartridges. But there's all these Switch games where you put the cartridge in and you still have to download so much of the game. There are a number right? of them. I yeah. think the new Metal Gear Solid thing was like that. I think yeah. that, that's what I heard about most Collections are, tend to be really bad for that. So if that trend continues, what's even the point of trying to keep this like physical media alive? That does happen with Switch games, and it, and it happens with discs the same way. I mean, you yeah. get discs where it's literally just like a, basically a key on the disc, and it's got n- almost nothing on it. You download the entire game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think those suck. Yeah. That sucks. That's like disingenuous. Yeah, it's like fake physical. It is. It's like fake physical. It's almost worse in some ways because you have to have a physical like key essentially that you have to put in the thing to be able to play it. it At it, least if it was all digital, you don't have to do that. It's all the downsides of digital without any of the convenience. Exactly. It's it, it all it is is fake peace of mind. I don't like it. But anyways, back to our conversation about um, will subscription services become the norm. Uh, we have a comment from Sabesius. You talk about somebody who's who sailed the, the damn Sea of Thieves. Uh, yeah. Besius here. Besius has been with us a long time. This is like our Sea of Thieves sensei. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you will treat him with respect. I, there's no telling how many hours Sabesius has put in the Sea of I Thieves. I wouldn't dare to ask him. No. You, you don't want to know because <laughs> it's a number that has surpassed human understanding. And yes. his... Knowledge of Sea of Thieves has also surpassed human understanding. And his ex, his, his pure bloodlust upon mm-hmm. the open waters knows no bounds. Yet he's friendly while he does it. It's a rare a, pirate indeed. <laughs> rare. I like that little line. Uh, Ooh! Yeah. I wish I'd done that on purpose. Yeah. Well, let's see what Species <laughs> thinks about uh, gaming subscriptions. He says, I think this trend will be cyclical over the long term. Therefore, the answer to this question is both yes and no. But I think in the short term, likely yes. Maybe it will be cyclical because we have mm. seen that with, with, with like, Game Pass. What do you mean? I just mean Game Pass's uh, exponential rise eventually plateaued. Oh, I was thinking more like, you know how in, say, music, 
we've had it go all subscription, but then we see like this rise of like like vinyl Models. records mm-hmm. come in, and that being a way that people buy music because they are craving that physical thing to have. Right, um, and maybe that will happen with. Uh, games where subscriptions will take over, but then the craving for physical games will come back and we'll have, you know. Mm. But I think that to me, that sounds, so the vinyls did come back and they did outsell CDs, Mm. but they didn't outsell subscription services. No. So to me, that would be like, we we go all di- all digital, but then we still have these small companies who put together these limited runs of like physical releases of games, kind of like what you have now mm-hmm. for some indie games that aren't going to get a physical release. Um, and I, I don't think it'll be mainstream is what I'm saying. I think it will be like a small niche part of the market and people like us may think it's awesome, but I, I, I could, I would love that, but I, I foresee a future in which you can't even do that because if the consoles don't have disk drives, Right. Then you True. can't even have, you know, right. little small runs of physical media because there is no way to play them. There's no way to get them onto your machine. Right. Whereas, you know, records are different because you can mm-hmm. always buy a record player and it can play the music and you're not bound to a console. Right. So then maybe we can't even have the I was just trying to go with your your vinyl. Yeah, I know. I, maybe we can't even have that. We can't even have the resurgence at some point. Or maybe, you know, if mm. one day we go all PC, okay, maybe then you can have disc readers, you know, that sure. attach. Because you don't even have PCs with disc drives anymore. No. But you can buy external disc drives. So maybe it could be a thing in the PC market, but and that may be where it all is. Maybe so. Maybe, maybe. it's just not on consoles. Maybe we're all headed to the PC master race and that's, that's where we land. Mm, yeah, I don't know. All right, we got a comment from Morris Dennison who said, all I got to say is there will be a massive pushback soon. Pregnant pause. As more and more people become aware that they own nothing and it can be taken from you at any moment, they will stumble onto the only solutions. Either choose to set sail upon the great seas for free or buy the little bit of physical media left. By the way, that pregnant pause was because this was an excerpt. I took sections of a lar- larger comment. Well, I had that suspicion. <laughs> okay. That doesn't make it any less pregnant. Yeah. Um, it was a <laughs> pregnant pause, but it wasn't intentional. <laughs> but I think that this has oh, some real truth to it, that when people figure out that, hey, when I'm paying for a subscription, I don't own that. I do think that piracy will go up a little. But, you know, now that I'm really kind of thinking about it a little bit, it hasn't, ever since subscriptions, music piracy hasn't gone up. In fact, I'd say it probably has gone down exponentially. So maybe yeah. there, maybe there isn't some truth to that. Maybe, maybe it's not as. Yeah. I mean, if you offer it for a, an affordable price, mm-hmm. I think most people will pay that mm-hmm. instead of going to the high seas, as Morris said. Yeah. I mean, I would. Yeah, I do too. I mean, if I have a legal way to purchase a game that is like that makes sense financially, that's not like a crazy expensive thing, that's what I do. Yeah. Even if it's a retro game, you know, if there is a legal way for me to purchase it that isn't going to break the bank, I don't pirate it. I just don't. Even if, you know, even if I have the option to pirate it and it would be free, I still don't. Yeah, everyone does. Yeah, I mean, I I also uh, only you know the only ROMs I've ever played were ripped from from games I already owned, you know, or or yeah. maybe games I borrowed from a friend, you know. So, yeah. my friend named Blackbeard, maybe. Yeah. But um, <laughs> right. Um, I'm just joking around, but yeah, I mean, I see where you're coming from here, Morris. But I, I don't really think it will lead to a rise in piracy unless the prices of these subscription services are crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about it's all about your bottom line. So last thing before we move on to the Three for Dale Club, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that, you know, Xbox is the first one to be seeing this failure? Will this eventually come to PlayStation? Will it come to Nintendo? Will gaming in general be hurt by what we've seen in oh, sorry, what we've seen Xbox go through? If they also stop making games, yes. Mm, and maybe that's <laughs> the difference, right? What that has to be the difference, right? Like the game they just haven't put out a banger you know that i mean like it does seem that way you know it's like maybe if maybe xbox is looking at it and they think like gosh something's not right we've got to try all this different stuff Mm -hmm. and maybe they're not realizing like you know maybe that isn't right is we just haven't gotten that great game yeah Uh, that could be it i mean like that may come down to it and be it i do think there are other problems i think that one i genuinely think that games coming to xbox and pc day you know same day I think that hurts console sales more than Xbox thought it would. I think you're probably right because mm-hmm. that's how we played Starfield. I mean, that's how I would play another one if I really wanted to play it. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and that, but you know, that part of that comes from the fact that I've kind of lost a little faith and I'm not ready to drop $70 on an Xbox exclusive right now. Now, if I had played Starfield and it was amazing, mm -hmm. I'd have bought one. I'd have bought a copy. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that I'd already paid 15 bucks to play it on Game Pass. And, and I may not be the only one that would have done that. I don't know. But you're probably among the rare people who would do that. Probably. But it was Bethesda. Yeah. We see like PlayStation saying like, okay, they're looking at what Microsoft's doing and they're like, hmm, I like some of these ideas, but I'm going to do it different. They say like, I like the idea of having it come to PC, but we're going to have it come to PC a year later. Mm -hmm. Or I like this idea of having this subscription service, but our first party games aren't going to go into that subscription service for maybe a year or two later. Yeah. Like you still, if you want to play those games when they first release, you have to buy the game. Right. Full price. And on I their think, console, and you got to buy a console to do it. And I think from a business perspective, that makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Now, we as consumers, you know, we've often like said, like, man, I wish Nintendo would do this. I wish Sony would do this, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe the reason they don't do it is because they, they have a little more forethought. And they're obviously coming at it from a completely different perspective mm -hmm. as us. And maybe they're doing what's best for them. But in the long run, it's, you know, keeping them in the race. Providing mm -hmm. more competition for each other, and maybe it is better for us. Hell, do we even know what we need? I I don't know. Oh my I, god! I just rabbit holed myself into <laughs> thinking I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, I mean, you said it. What? Yeah. I'm. You know, if you had to go down that rabbit hole to have that discovery, I mean, I'm glad you went down the rabbit hole, Daniel. What discovery? Mm. Daniel's been doing this thing lately where if I say something mean to him, he just asks me to repeat it and because he thinks that I'm going to realize that I was being mean. I, I realize I'm being mean. I do it on purpose. What are you talking about, man? So, I just didn't hear you. Okay. Maybe they heard you. I mean, it's more about them than me, but dang, like, I don't like to feel excluded, but okay. Okay. Jeez, dude. Yeah. But I, I do think that if, um, if PlayStation and Nintendo, I think if they just follow what Xbox is doing, like, Number by number, mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, I think things are going to go bad. I think things are going to go poorly. Yeah, but if they go poorly for everybody. It, so listen, okay, <laughs> okay. so if, if everybody's in the gutter, then we can just all fight it out in the gutter and we have competition again. Right. They just need to be on an even playing field. Yeah, so maybe Nintendo and PlayStation does need to do all this crap that Xbox did that's mm -hmm. so pro-consumer that got them in this predicament to begin with. Yeah. And maybe stop making games. And... They can all end up in the gutter together. They mm -hmm. can fight it out. We'll all spend money on them and we'll throw money at them while they're rolling around in the mud and stuff. And we'll be all better for it. Yeah. I wish that everyone would be as pro consumer as Xbox. I do too. I really do. Because I think that is the, the thing that makes me love Xbox so much is that we have all these options. You know, you just, mm -hmm. you don't have to be stuck on one place. You don't have to pay the full price for the games. Like that is awesome from a consumer standpoint. It just sucks for them in terms of their business. And it's yeah. like, what? Oh my gosh. But yeah, if we could get Nintendo and PlayStation to do the same, you're right. Maybe there would be competition again. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, mm -hmm. it kind of, that kind of comes back to the people who are like console exclusives are dumb. No one can argue that console exclusives are good for anybody. I mean, like, I don't know. I think there's more arguments to be made on both sides. For here. sure. For sure. Shoot. I have discovered things about myself today and, and what I think is, is best. Mm -hmm. It has been a morning of great self-discovery and introspection, and I'm glad to be here for it. Mm -hmm. Well, Daniel, speaking of self-discovery, I recently discovered that we have this club called the Three for Dale Club. Do we really? We do. And what it is, is it is our super secret club that you can join by leaving us a comment and leave the secret code phrase, Three for Dale. Yes. What that does is that lets us know that you made it all the way to the end of the podcast. If you leave that code phrase in your comment, we find it and we're going to shout you out at the end of the next podcast just to thank you for hanging out here with us, supporting the podcast, and just hanging with us. That's right. The initial member of this week's exclusive organization, the Three for Dale Club, is Tom Derry, who said, did I beat Guy? Yeah, Tom was amazed that he beat Guy to the Three for Dale Club this week. Mm -hmm. Um you know, looks like you did, and, Tom. He, and you did. You beat Guy. Guy was next, you know, <laughs> or was it early on. Well, speaking of the next one, is Guy. Yeah. Guy said, "I would love to see Sony come back to the handheld market with something like that." I played a ton of Vita, and it's one of my favorite consoles of all time. So last week we talked about PlayStation potentially creating a new handheld. Go back and watch that podcast if you want to see what we had to say about that. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, I would love to see them come back to the handheld market. And he loved the Vita. I agree with you, guy. That would be amazing. And I would really love to buy a Vita. Me too. I want a Vita. I want yeah. a, I, I never really got into the PlayStation handhelds, mm -hmm. which kind of sucks because they're gone. There's no way to buy them anymore unless you buy secondhand. Right. And, you know, they're so easy to emulate. <laughs> so They are. They are. <laughs> I don't know that, you know, buying one is on the top of my list of things to do. But It'd be awful cool, though. It would be cool. All right. Next up, we got Kitaclism, who said, I didn't catch the state of play since I only have Xbox, but I'm throwing every coin I got in the wishing well for Helldivers 2 on Xbox. I mean, Helldivers 2 is one of those rare games that did go to PC the same day that it came out on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a live service game, so it kind of makes sense. It's a, Or at least it's a team-based game right. with live service elements. Uh, so it kind of makes sense. You want as many people playing as possible. Uh, I heard Helldivers 2 was good. I don't yeah. know that it's going to have legs, but... I, I heard it was good, good too. Uh, you know, our new... Our new Friend that we've made through Twitch, old Dapper Dak, he was playing Hell Divers. He was talking about that, and and he said it was fun. Hmm. So, I don't think it's going to go to Xbox though, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not seeing that. <laughs> no. Uh, next we got uh, Bobbity, who said no handheld, focus on PS5 games and accessories. Bobbity doesn't think PlayStation should create a handheld. I think he just thinks they won't. You think? You, you think? No, I right. know you're totally right. He thinks they shouldn't. I disagree, but I'm glad to have you anyway, Bobbity. Thank you for your three for Dale. I kind of think that focus on PS5 games would be better personally. I mean, like I would love a handheld from PlayStation. That'd be cool. But uh, if that means that the development teams are going to get split and you're going to have less focus on what I think should be their main focus, which is the PS5, I kind of agree. I, I don't know if that's a good thing. They got enough money to hire whoever they need. Make me my damn handheld. <laughs> I kind of I I spazzed out on that handheld. All right, next up we got Dylan Rafferty, who said, don't see the point of a third for Dale. PlayStation <laughs> Portable with unique games. I like the idea... I like the idea I heard of it being anchored to the PS4. It plays on PS4. It plays on the portable. And going forward, companies would essentially support both for less demanding games. Yeah, I guess you could do that. You know, like basically be old hardware, but a handheld. Kind of like what we've seen Nintendo do with the Switch. Yeah. Um, you know, that would be like PlayStation directly competing with the Switch, essentially, you know. It would. Um I don't know. I don't know if that because PS4 is old. I mean, and by the time this comes out, it's going to be like two generations old. Yeah. If this comes out, and is PlayStation ready to step up and tangle with the big boys at Nintendo? Are they ready to? They've move tried. To the, are they ready to leave the kitty table? We've seen them try it twice. That's a joke to talk about Nintendo not being the kid table because they make the kid games. But I, I know what you were saying. Okay. I was just going with it because I think that it's, I think there's some truth there. I think there is too. Nintendo. Yeah. Everybody talks about Nintendo like everybody will be like, yeah, you know, Xbox and PlayStation, they're competing. Nintendo's doing their own thing. The reason they can say that about Nintendo is because they are doing their own thing, but it's still making consoles. Mm -hmm. They're making, they're doing the same thing, and they're just doing it different, and some would say better. I so, don't necessarily subscribe to the thought that Nintendo doesn't compete with Xbox and PlayStation. I don't either, but people say that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy to say, to like, to, to say like, oh, let's not even talk about them, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily... The correct approach. I mean, yeah, like they don't go for the high end market; they go for the low end market. But mm -hmm. you know, even the Switch is it's three hundred dollars. So I mean, like, or three fifty for the OLED. You know, a PlayStation you can get into at four hundred. That's not a big enough difference to say that they're not competing at the same level in terms of price. It's just Agreed. it's just not. They're too similar. All right, hit us, Cody. All right, next we got Landon Stallings, Dale himself. Who said Metal Gear Solid Five is the worst game in the series as far as the story goes, but the best for gameplay? We talked about Kojima last mm, week. We should sure said did. maybe if you guys had played the earlier games, you would appreciate Kojima more. <laughs> but I definitely don't feel like Kojima is a god among us, like he's so often treated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we may have cast a little shade on Kojima in the last podcast. I stand by what I said. I'm not <laughs> saying the man's not talented. And no, the man, I, I mean. I'm I mean, not saying that he hasn't done some great things and that he mm -hmm. has great things to give us still. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying chill out, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we should – I think the gaming industry should chill out because I've seen people who like literally just like bow down and worship Kojima and I get it. Like he's created games that people love. So I'm yeah. not saying like it isn't at least somewhat deserved, but I don't think anybody, no matter how successful they should be, should be treated in a way that yes. <laughs> seemingly Kojima is treated. Except Sakurai. Right. Well, that's If Sakurai course, was here right now, I'd shine his shoes. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, like let me shine your shoes. Please. Please, Sakura. Let me shine your shoes. Also, can I keep them? Anyway, moving on. D eighteen said, uh, PS, Pokemon with the worst breath has to be Doug Trio or Diglett. Any Pokemon that eats dirt, lol. You got a point. I don't know, man. 
I still think lick a tongue. Lick and everything he comes in contact with. Yeah, but he doesn't eat dirt. You know, he probably licked dirt. But does dirt really smell that bad? That's what I don't, I don't think mm. so. I mean, there's definitely like some... There's, an, e- what dirt. there's an ecosystem in there. Right. You know, like <laughs> there's some bacteria and things in there. But mm-hmm. thinking about all the things lick a tongue is licking. Hey, I mean, I think there we need to have maybe a dedicated podcast where we just figure out which Pokemon has the worst breath. What about Snorlax? Snorlax eats everything. Mm-hmm. And he's a mouth breather. So you know that seen, breath ain't going to be good. I ain't never seen Snorlax uh, brush his teeth or swish a Listerine. You never seen any Pokemon do that, though. Why are you the way that you are? I, I, because I just like to, <laughs> I just like to, you know, be a contrarian when it comes to anything Daniel says. For once, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Omaha, by the way. Uh, Omaha, D18. All right, y'all. Well, let us know in the comments what you think about what we talked about today, about mm-hmm. this whole thing. What's going on with Xbox? What do you think? Do you think Xbox is really in trouble, or is this just people being dramatic over nothing? Mm-hmm. And then also, what do you think about subscriptions? Yep. And I would also like to give a congratulations to the San Francisco 49ers on their Super Bowl victory. Oh, you're calling it right now. We're recording this the day of the Super Bowl, so that'll be interesting to see how that ages. Because <laughs> <laughs> by the time tomorrow, when it gets published, the Super Bowl will be over. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything and just let you go. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why'd you have to explain the bit? I don't know. I just think it's funny. All right. I, I just like, I just like, wait, that's tonight. Okay. Look, well, I'm, now you get it, I'm a little slow, okay? And I got to spell out every joke Daniel makes just so to make sure that you guys understand it because I need to make sure I understand it. All right. Well, until next time, guys, I'm Randy. Which makes me Daniel. This has been Gaming Gig. Three for Dale. <laughs>